All right, we're recording. Yo, 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 mic check one, two, one, two. What is up, everybody? I have the beautiful, gorgeous Witch of Wonderlust, aka Olivia, and she has been gracious enough to have be on my channel, which I'm so thankful. First of all, uh, I just want to thank you for coming on here, baby girl. And um, I'm sure every, a lot of you know who she is, but I'm sure a lot of you don't. And so go check her out um, on her channel, which will be linked in the description box. So how are you? I'm great. I'm, I fangirled. We talked about this, but I fangirled when you like followed me back. I was like, oh, oh, and then when you posted it and was like, I love her videos, I was like, oh my God, she's a fan. Like, <laughs> I felt the same way when I I'm like, oh, the Witch of Wonderless follows me. I am such a fan. You are amazing. I love how you practice. You have like this, first of all, your editing is amazing. I, one day you might have to teach me that. Um, but you're, pra you're, you're just very relaxing and like, I don't know, calming to watch. So I really enjoy uh, your work. So question, I, I have some questions here that I was hoping you'd answer for my babies. Okay. Um, so how long have you been a witch? How long have you been practicing? Um, when I started like realizing, oh, I'm doing something and that's doing something, uh, I was actually around 13. So probably around uh, anywhere between 10 and 11 years now. But only maybe in the past seven years have I actually like practiced and like, you know, <laughs> and writing things down and yeah, like started to really kind of hone in on that. But yeah, I've been doing things for about 10 or 11 years. So that's interesting. 13 seems to be the number, like yeah. where everybody really kind of gets that awakening I, I don't know, because that's when I started. So what was your first, like, actual spell? Uh, I can't remember from back then, but I know that I used to cast spells on my mom a lot, like, in a good way, not, you know, like, so I would take a candle and, like, dig out the wax and, like, put things in it and try to ask it to, like, give her luck or, like, give her strength or, like, whatever I felt like she needed at that time and would, like put back the wax like on a new candle so it looked like I just bought it, give it to her, and then she would just, you know, she'd light it and I, I would think my intentions would work. Um, Aw, what a good daughter. <laughs> so does your mom, like, do you have any relatives that practice or? Uh, actually, funny story. So I, I didn't think so up until recently I learned. Um, so I'm half Irish and half Filipino. And Beautiful mix, by the way. <laughs> thanks. Um, both of my parents are wonderful looking people, so I just, I got lucky. <laughs> sure, I'm sure. <laughs> um, yeah, so my, I didn't think that any of my family practiced, but I had a weird feeling about my Filipino side, and so I've been really trying to get back into that folk practice before colonization and stuff, and um, I was actually talking to a Filipino shaman and she connected to one of my ancestors and I'm skeptical when it comes to those things even then. And she started telling me these things that I was like, that's not true though. I don't think that's true. And then I asked my parents about it and they verified everything. Like these are things that they'd never told me. And I was like, what? And my dad goes, yeah, you know, what's really strange is uh, your, like your, uh, your grandfather when at his funeral, like, we didn't know that he was a Freemason Mason until all of them showed up at his funeral. And wow. Like, what? <laughs> it's a super secretive society to the Freemasons. So, so did you tell the girl that she nailed it on the head? Cause that's yeah. like the most mortifying thing when like, thank God, not it's never happened, but that's a fear of mine. Like to, to do a reading and somebody to be like, uh, no, you're wrong. Did you tell her she was? She I did. Right. Yeah, yeah. Because she said all these things. Um, you know, she was like, "Oh, your your grandfather had to leave the uh, the Philippines because that's where my dad grew up, um, and have to take all of his kids and go over to the um, go over to America because he was in danger and um, you know he was wounded and his family was in danger. And then he she was saying that he was like very spiritual and all these things, and I was like my family was like a very Catholic and then very Christian. So I was like, eh. but then I asked him about it and he goes, oh yeah, he was a 
you know, he was involved with like some very strong political people and there was like death threats and like bounties on his head. And I was like, nobody told me that. Wow. That's you know, I was cool. like, <laughs> that's pretty cool. Actually. I mean, yeah. to find out about that later. And it's funny you say that because I know I have a lot of Filipino, you know, clients and, and subs and they are very spiritual people. Mm -hmm. You know, there's um, one of my uh, Filipino clients told me about a ritual that they do where they kind of like feed the ancestors mm -hmm. and then like they put it out for the ancestors and they, they leave it and then they eat it the next day or something like that for blessing. Maybe that's just a ritual for her family. Have you heard about that? Yeah. So um, when I, cause I've done rituals very similar for my Filipino ancestors where you actually cook and make a lot of the things that they would eat traditionally. Exactly. So um, you set it out and then like at the either at the end of the ritual, is usually when I do it, but it can be overnight, but sometimes things will go bad. So, you know, like you put out all these, um, all these different dishes and food. And then by the end of the ritual, you basically feast with them. Mm, I, t I love that idea. Usually, you know, you, you, I was always taught, like, you can either eat the food or you could bury it mm -hmm. just as long as it's kind of going back to nature. Um, mm -hmm. so that's a pretty cool, um, ritual so okay so we get to the good stuff so how do you feel about hexes in like dark work in my opinion if you play stupid games you get stupid prizes <laughs> yes girl yes. so you know and it's not like something that i'm like oh hexed heck yeah, you know, like, <laughs> yeah. they're a lot of work and a lot of time it's not worth it because you know you get a lot of people that are like oh i want to hex my my sister that's still living with me or something and you're like I don't think you want to do that you know they're still because in the you're still in the house right. <laughs> right but then like there's there's times when people have been used and abused and you know what you got to do something about it like you have all this power why why would you just allow yourself to be a doormat you know I think there's there's a time and a place for things agreed we definitely see eye to eye we won't just go throwing high, although i sometimes have a temper and probably people think <laughs> okay. that i would i like to threaten them sometimes just to kind of get under people's skin but but i don't just throw them um okay any crazy supernatural experiences that you could recall i have a few <laughs> um so one of them the only one it, or like the biggest one I think maybe is um, when I was friends with somebody in high school, like we were best friends. She was friends with somebody that I didn't like and we're gonna call him um, Patrick. And so, you know, she's friends with Patrick's and I don't like him, but I'm friends with her. So I'm gonna hang out with her all the time even though she's hanging out with Patrick. So we go over to his place all the time, we hang out. And I'm not one to like drink a ton, like I'll have a drink or two, but I'm not going to get as drunk, especially in a place that I don't like or know the person. And so um, Patrick and his brother get like blackout drunk along with my friend and this other guy, Brady and I are like friends and we're hanging out and he doesn't drink either. So we're just chilling, babysitting. And finally, Patrick and my friend go missing, like they leave the house and we don't know where they are. And it's like, 3 a.m. which is it's three which an hour yeah so we're calling them because they're dr like they're they're like belligerent drunk and we're like where where are you guys and you know they're like oh we're in a field with a bunch of dogs and we were like what and then they're like oh we're, we're across the bridge and we're like there's no bridge like there's in in like a minimum of like two miles vicinity of where this house is I was like there's no bridge and we're driving around trying to find them. And finally, um, Patrick's like, well, you have to come and find me. They said, you have to come and find me. And I was like, okay. And you know, I'm thinking he's just trying to freak us out, whatever. I don't know. And or maybe he's drunk and like not seeing things uh, rationally. Oh, well, it gets worse. So we pull up or, um, we get back to the place. My friend and his brother who are drunk are still down or like, found their way back home and they have this like cutout of like a dog 
And they're like, we found him and we took him home. And I was like, okay. So we locked them in the basement to just like stay there. Um, <laughs> sounds terrible, but that's, that's, that was like where his room was. It was, was there. Okay. <laughs> it was there. <laughs> so we locked him in there, keep him safe. And uh, we go and find Patrick and he's just sitting like on the side of one of the streets in a cul-de-sac rocking back and forth. And he's like, you guys found me. And we were like, okay, like get in the car. And he was like, no. <laughs> and we were like, get in the car, Patrick. And he's like, no. And so finally we're like, Patrick, and he like flipped out, got super angry, started screaming things. And we were like, okay, will you walk next to the car? And he's like, oh yeah. So walks home, we get downstairs and he starts playing some video game and literally just starts like killing himself over and over in this video game. And so my friend Brady and I are supernatural fans. So we were like, oh, he's possessed. So we like start joking and like saying the exorcism, which is a real exorcism on the show. Mm. And Patrick, like I'm on the other side of the room, launches himself at me, pins me down. Cause he could, there's no way he could have heard me whispering this and is on my throat and was like, you better stop fucking saying that. He was like, stop fucking saying that. And Ooh, I got like, chills. And I like, I was like, um, and Brady like had to rip him off and he was like freaking out. He was like, stop saying that. Like he was screaming and he was just like all over the place. And Brady what and I were you were saying like, like the power of Christ compels you or something like um, that. There's an exorcism that is used. It's like all in Latin that they mm -hmm. use in, um, in supernatural. And again, like we were saying it as a joke, despite the fact that it was actually an exorcism. And the next morning, not all three of them don't remember anything except for dreams. Wow, that's bizarre. Anything. And so like, you know, my friend, I've known her at the time for like 10 years and she would not, like I know when she- Do that as a joke. Yeah. So it was just really weird. And then finally we got rid of that like weird coyote thing and things kind of started being okay. But low key, I think something was attached to Patrick just because I really never liked him. And he was a terrible person in a lot of other ways, but- you think it attached like from that day on or he always had something? I think he always had something and maybe when he like went out and did some, oh, and they try, I, I know they tried to play with a Ouija board. I mean, it's a bunch of white people. Sorry. They were just like, let's just play with it. And I was kind of like, that's not really how you do it, you know? Um, and you gotta be careful. Yeah. And they did take it to a park and did something with it. And so I don't know, like if, he was just like sending out that energy and something was like, ah, yes, you're the one. Or I really don't know like, what happened, but. I feel like an alternate universe maybe came, like when they were walking around, like they somehow stumbled into like a different dimension. You know how actually, um, and it's interesting they were drunk, but I've always felt because in Florida, which is where I grew up and I heard like in the West Coast, which is where you are, um well midwest arizona is considered midwest i don't know but anyway meth is a big problem and um i feel like because i've because okay so i lived in a not so great neighborhood and there was a lot of people on the street that would have like literally we couldn't put christmas lights up one year because people were stealing them that's how bad it was um and when you'd see these people they would be it was like if you look in their eyes, it was like completely black. And it was almost like, and they were all hallucinating the same thing. They were all hallucinating shadow people. And they were saying this. And I, and I thought in my mind, like, what could possibly make all these people hallucinate the same exact thing? That's not a hallucination. Mm -hmm. I feel like it brought them to a different level. And just the darkness you could see in their eyes. It was like their eyes. Like one girl, I knew her eyes were blue naturally, but that day they were like pitch black. So I think certain like substances will, if you're not careful, they can open you up to things like that. That's, yeah. that's just how I feel, but. Um, I agree wholeheartedly. I, I don't know what happened that day. Like, I don't know. It was just a weird, and I, I wish I would have known like what the date was just because, you know, for reference, like to know Maybe get Maybe it was something. My friends and pay them to tell me all about that day or something and see if anything lined up or I don't know. I think they, I think I honestly feel that they, they tripped into some kind of alternate dimension somehow. That's what I guess we'll never know exactly, but I think I know the mysteries of life. <laughs>
That is weird, though. That would freak. I got chills when you said that he got in your face like that. I was like, Ugh. Yeah, he like he was on top of me. He like pinned me down. It was. Mm -mm. Yeah. He he wouldn't want to do me like that. One time, my my husband called me a, a dumb b word, and I literally was laying down in the bed. And the the as soon as I got up, the globe of the fan literally just exploded and broke and cut him across the forehead. And I was like, "Yep." That's my spirits. Don't, yeah, they, don't they were like, what did you say, sir? <laughs> what did you say? Exactly. So speaking of Ouija board, I, I this wasn't on my list, but but what do you how do you feel about the Ouija board? Do you do you use them? Do you experience them? Or you just do you just leave them alone? I have used them very rarely. Um it's not like a tool of choice for me just because it doesn't like connect with me directly, but I really just feel like it's more of a direct way of communication. And because of that, that's why it's linked to, uh, you know, like more baneful spirits. And I think it's just because, because it's so direct and it takes less effort than so something like tarot cards or other forms of divination. Maybe that's why it's easier for baneful spirits to come through because if somebody is experienced with tarot cards, they're going to be like, oh, hell no. And if somebody's not experienced, they're just going to be like, ah. You know, like, yeah. it's, it's easy to attach, I guess. Uh, that's that my makes experience. total sense. That makes yeah. total sense. I honestly haven't had, I mean, I tried when I was a kid, it was easier. But as I got older, I have a harder time connecting. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know. Yeah, I have never had bad, bad experiences with them, but um, I mean, I guess other than that one time that they did it, but I wasn't involved in it, so I don't know. But you connected, you got answers? Yeah, actually, the one time, uh, it was actually on Halloween, and I did it out of, out of spite, actually, because I promised my roommates that there were no spirits in the house, and then they bailed on me for Halloween the day before, and I was like, fine. <laughs> <laughs> I brought my friends over and, you know, my friend was like, oh, I have a Ouija board. And I was like, bring it. And, um, so it was kind of out of spite, not going to lie. But uh, we, I, we connected to a spirit that we believe, um, I don't remember completely, I think it was two years ago, that we believe they were from Florida and was from a specific, uh, from like the 90s, from a specific college and studied like tech. Um, but that was it. You know, like there was nothing that I was like, Oh my gosh. Like it was kind of like, oh, okay, nice to meet you. You know? <laughs> yeah. That's pretty cool. I, I did one time connect with somebody, but I was, I was only 13 and I'll never forget. His name was Hezig. Hezig. That's how it was spelled. And he was from Germany and um, he was a little kid. He said he was a little boy when he died. And, but then at the end, they kept like, okay, we tried to say goodbye, you know, because we were, we were kids and, but we did remember we had to say goodbye. So we kept trying to say goodbye and he kept moving the thing to F you, F you and cursing us out. So we got scared at that point. Yeah. We were like, okay. And I, and I didn't play it again for years. And then like the last time I tried was like 2017, but it was a homemade Ouija board that I personally made. And I, I think the planchette or whatever couldn't get good traction. I don't know. I just wasn't connecting, but I haven't tried in a while. But I think you make me want to try again. <laughs> I'll come out to you. We'll, we'll do it together. Yes, girl. That sounds like a plan. You know what I want to do? I want to get together and go to Salem. That would be a lot of fun. That'd be a lot yes. of fun. And it's not far from here, girl. It's literally only like a couple of hours drive. Really? So, yeah. I like road trips. I don't mind them. Let's go. I'm down when you are. So here's a good one. How do you feel about doing work for others? Like whether in a client setting or just for friends or family? How do you feel about it? I'm really picky. Um, really picky. <laughs> but I, I don't take clients just because I really don't feel that, um, like that confident in myself yet to do work for other people. With that said- You'd be great, girl. You, you, you'd be oh, great. I Seriously. don't know. I, I feel like, I don't know. I feel like, you know, taking on response or like you have a responsibility magically. That's how I feel. You know, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's a lot to kind of take on. And, um, but yeah, so like I have some friends that, 
they know, they understand. I'm like, if something kind of wonky happens, like, let me know, but also I'm sorry in advance, you know, like <laughs> still figuring these things out. But I do have a few friends that, um, if they need something or if they are wondering if I can help or whatever, like they'll ask me to help out. And usually, um, we trade our trades. So my spell work would be in trade for, you know, artwork or for um, music or whatever that may be that they do. Um, Cause all my friends are talented and wonderful. I just got That's blessed. Awesome. blessed um, but yeah, so I can, I can do that. And then that's also a way that I kind of experiment with some things that I make, like my oils and things like that. I don't, I don't have any oils that I'm like, this is the one quite yet. So it's like, can I experiment on this spell that I'm doing for you? And let me know how that turns out, you know, but. You're hard on yourself. I think you, you don't give yourself enough credit. You've been in the craft since you were 13. I'm not exact. You said 11 years or so so that makes you like in your early oh you, you're young and you're in your early 20s but but you've been practicing since you were 13 girl so I mean you have the experience and I think and what's your sign by the way uh my my son is a Virgo Virgo I knew you had to so your birthday is what coming up or did it pass it just passed oh happy belated birthday baby Thanks. girl I wish you a lot of abundance, prosperity, success, good health, and love, inshallah. Um, but that no wonder. I swear, I was thinking in my mind, she's got to be an earth sign. Even though, you know, you got the, the Western astrology, the Vedic astrology, every, it's different. But you're hard on yourself, and that's so an earth sign. Mm -hmm. And you're a perfectionist. That's so a Virgo. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, I think, I think... I think you're ready. I mean, when you're ready, nobody could tell you you're ready, but you never know until you try. And I definitely feel you have that energy, you have the experience and the fact that you're um, very, you are a perfectionist and you do take it as a responsibility. There are a lot of spellcasters that don't take it as a responsibility. Their mindset is like, if it works, it works. If it don't, it don't. Mm -hmm. I, I, I wish I could kind of be a little more like that, but I'm very hard on myself too. And it, like, I, it's like, okay, I'm taking this responsibility to make something happen for you. And if it doesn't work, it's going to bother the shit out of me for years to come. But um, that's a good thing, but you, you will drive yourself crazy at that. Right. But yeah, I think you'll be, I think, Hey, when you're, and do you have a, you do have a website, go ahead and plug it in. Just, just, yeah. uh, it's, so. it's just the witch of wonderlust.com. I'm going to plug her into the, um, the, um, brain fart. Uh, what is it called? The description. <laughs> right. <laughs> it was contagious. The, uh, description, the description. We both were kind of like, what the hell is that called? Okay. Um, do you, do you feel it necessary to work with the moon phases? Like, do you have to do dark work during a waning, love work during a waxing or whatever? Um, I, I like, I think it's an extra boost for me, but if I need something done, you, you do know, it. Like, I'm gonna do it. Yeah. But most of the time, like if I can plan it, I will. Um, but if it's like, I need to do this now, then it's going to happen now. And I'm just going to kind of manipulate the ritual. I guess, I guess, yes, then, because mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess yes, actually. <laughs> um, inadvertently kind of do it. Yeah, because yeah. um, then, like, if it's, like, a, something to bring in or whatever, and I it's, like, a dark moon, then I'm going to be like, okay, well, everything that's not serving me in that situation, I'm going to banish first. You know, like, at least do something, but I can't. Yeah. It, it's kind of hard to bring something in when it's a dark moon, you know, so... I suppose you're right. <laughs> you naturally, because you're just a natural witch, so you naturally just do it without even thinking. That's why I wanted to ask it, because, you know, I kind of had a feeling the answer would be like that. <laughs> um, so how do you, so, okay, working with Mufe. So how do you tell a new, first of all, are you single, if that's okay for me to ask? <laughs> no. <laughs> no? Okay. So how did you, so you have a partner, how did you tell the, your partner that you were a witch or did they know you were ready for so long that they knew? Uh, no. So the first, so the first 
two years. They didn't know um, because they grew up in a very Christian home, like a very, very, very Christian home. And I didn't want to do that, you know, like I did. And so, I mean, I had practiced kind of like not in the light. It, like I didn't tell in the broom closet. Yeah. I just, you know, I didn't tell anybody about it um, up until like maybe 2017 or 20, 20, yeah, 2018. Like I, I, nobody knew. And so finally, when I moved out to LA, um, he didn't know. And I started, I started going to a non-denominational coven um, at, that was meeting at this like place that was called a museum. And um, I was just saying, oh, I'm going to go meet up at the museum. I'm going to go to the museum. And he's like, okay, all right. So then finally a year or so goes by and I was like, okay, now's the time. And it was slow things. I was like, oh, I, I bought myself some tarot cards for my birthday. Aren't they, <laughs> you know, like slow, slow. And then um, I was like, hey, so the group at the museum is having like a party. It's kind of like a Christmas party, but they're calling it Yule. So <laughs> um, everybody's a practicing witch. Do you want to come? <laughs> he, he was weird about it like at first it was like no I'm uncomfortable no and nowadays he's like where's that spell jar I'm mad at that person just <laughs> <That's> <laughs> awesome. so he's wonderful um it's it's very yeah I very love awesome. it yeah very sweet that had to be so nerve-wracking jeez it was scary um especially with like the background that he had like very very deep into religion which you know is fine but it's yeah. really tough to bring those things to those people when you're like I really care about you and I want you to be okay with this you yeah know? but I feel like somebody he truly loves you so that's you know it's it's not you know it's not a question of I mean if they don't accept it then they don't accept you so you know so that's great that I love that. I got really blessed with my husband. Like he, you know, I was already kind of a known witch. And so um, he just, it, it was, it was like nothing new. It was just like, oh, you know, oh, I like good. the color blue. I'm a witch. You yeah. Know? <laughs> um, so that being said, um, you read tarot too? Yeah, not, not. I guess often, but, um, and I don't read tarot for other people. Either. I was going to ask, yeah. you know, okay. I was going to plug you. I'm like, ugh, you guys are in for a treat if she should ever decide to do work for people <laughs> or read for people. You guys would be considered very lucky. You know, I do um, like doing tea leaf readings for other people. That's something that you I do love. tea leaf reading. I love doing tea leaf readings for other people. And like, it's so fun because that's just like a thing that, you do, you know, when people come over, you're like, oh, I'm making, do you want tea? You want tea? <laughs> and so, you know, I'll be just, all up in your business. <laughs> yeah. And some of my friends would get so, they're like, you know, they're drinking tea. And then I like take the, the tea bag that I like put the tea in and like dump it in there. And they're like, why would you do that? I'm like, finish it. <laughs> and then let me see your cup. <laughs> and it's, you it's, have one of those cups with the stuff on it or do you just. Yeah. My friend actually. Give? Yeah, she gave it to me as a going away present. I didn't have one for years up until like last month. So it's- I've never seen that before up until recently. Yeah, I, I want to say they're more recent. I don't know. Like It I don't have to be because I didn't never, honestly, I've, I've, you know, Arabs, they read coffee and or or tea. It's, it's a Middle Eastern thing, but mostly in my family, it's always been coffee because that's what they like to drink. And basically they're just, looking for the pictures and you know like snakes would be somebody stabbing you in the back or the evil eye or things like that but to be honest it's never been my forte so how did you learn to do that <laughs> um, uh, I mean so my mom is a, a huge tea lover she's probably the only reason I'm so into tea as much as I am um like she has like two cabinets and three drawers just of tea and uh, growing up in Colorado, we have the celestial seasons too. So like that's where the only factory is. So we'd go up there all the time as like a mother daughter type of trip. And so 
uh, what's hilarious is I didn't really like know about loose leaf tea until I was probably like 17, which is hilarious. But um, then I got really into it and I didn't know how to drink it. So I just like put the loose leaf tea in the water and was like, I guess I'm <laughs> keeping it with my teeth. I don't know. Like I didn't know there were steepers. For like, <laughs> I didn't know that either until you just told me. I thought that's how I'm like, isn't that how you drink it? I'm not a big tea person. Oh, okay. So. Yeah, I like coffee. I like coffee too. Um, so yeah, like I would just steep it with my teeth and then I don't, it was kind of like a, like how I explain it to people. I'm like, well, you know, when you're out just like laying around on the grass and you see clouds and you just see things in the clouds, like it's the same thing. So I was kind of like, oh, that kind of looks like you know, that kind of looks like a cat or that kind of looks like a, a, a moth or whatever, like a ship. And I would just start seeing things in it and being kind of like, that's neat. And then I started slowly putting that together of like, oh, I can, you know, put together these um, symbols. So it's, you know, like uh, if you have a symbol for something already in your mind or that you associate something with another thing, when you start seeing that reiterate in your coffee cup or in your tea cup, you're kind of like, huh. You know, like, oh, I was dreaming about that. Or like, I see, I'm seeing this everywhere and I don't know why. And then you see it show up in your coffee cup or your tea cup. You're kind of like, maybe I should play oh, that. Yeah. That's cool. That takes, you know, so you're like seeing it in your mind's eye pretty much. Like you're seeing it and it's kind of like you and spirit kind of have your own dialogue. Yeah. That's kind of how I feel with the tarot. Like maybe some readers will look at the six of pentacles as, abundance whereas i'll see it as an unequal give and take you know one person giving another but everybody reads it different but my spirits know what to throw out to make me see mm -hmm. certain things so that's kind of like with you with the the cups have you tried the cups with the little markings and the little things in it do you like it i uh, i don't i i think i do in a way it's almost like relearning it just because um you're seeing like I used to just, it was just tea leaves. There was nothing else to read off of. It was just the leaves. Whereas now you have to pay attention more so of like the, where your leaves are landing in the symbols. So, you know, like if, it, if, if your uh, moth is landing close to the heart, then that means something different. Like I, I will associate that something different you know, I don't know if that makes sense. Like, I kind of have to learn the symbols in the cup in order to understand how to read it. So No, it's, it makes total sense. Yeah, I, I still feel like I've got training wheels on with it, but it's fun. That perfectionist in you, but I <laughs> guarantee if you read, you'd be like, out of this world, girl. Yeah. So tell me a little more about your site. Like, what I, I checked it out very briefly, but for my audience, uh, what's on there? Uh, on my website? Yeah. Um, so it's kind of just like a, like a little blurb about me and then just kind of connections of like, this is my Instagram, this is my YouTube and I have a forum. Um, so, it, you know, people can go on there and ask other, other people questions in the community and that's awesome. Yeah. Um, and then like, I have links to a discord server. So it's like a chat room for other people to talk to the community as well. And, um, there are like products. So I do have like printable grimoire pages that are like 50 cents per page. And they're mainly like very basic um, information or I have one for like my money bowl spell or difficult conversations or, you know, like things that should be um, easy for people who are just now stepping into it to cast. But like, yeah. And then you can print it on like whatever pages you want and all that jazz. But, you know, it's not a lot of money, but it, it like it helps when people do you know purchase the two pages it's like that's a dollar you know you just absolutely i mean making a you know free content you guys go check out her website printable so like so people could just go on your site and print out these spells and they just they're only a dollar fifty so that's amazing that's yeah. very awesome of you and you got merch soon hopefully y'all shall have her oils and powders and things maybe like that. I don't know. we'll see soon okay. hopefully inshallah I'm, I'm hoping for because you you you're still you're young but you have an old soul 
and I feel like you're an amazing witch and Thanks. I think anything you make is going to be very good and powerful because you're a Virgo girl. You have <laughs> your perfect perfectionism is in your blood. So right. you live in LA. I, first, I guess I thought you, I assumed you lived in uh, Arizona. I think I want to say, you probably said that on your channel a million times. So I'm, I'm sorry about around. that. I move around a lot. Um, so I, I've been living in LA. I, just moved back home for personal reasons, like literally the first week of August. Um, and then once the borders open, I'm planning on, and you know, COVID's not a whole last thing. Yeah. Uh, I'm planning on traveling quite a bit because that's like kind of been a thing that I really want to do to travel and understand other cultures and spiritualities and visit other sacred places of the world. And, you know, I, I want to like, experience it rather than read about it and like see videos like I want to be there and uh kind of document my my experience on that as well so that's another reason that I'm like so blessed to have gotten to the point with my YouTube channel that I can work from my computer like I when I I literally like when I think about it I want to cry sometimes because it's, it's like I can do that now and that's just like that's I, I the blessing, know. girl. <laughs> and your gratitude it just brings more blessings, you know, and, and it's amazing. I couldn't imagine. I'm only at bare, not even 30 yet, and I feel like it's such a blessing. I'm like, you know, like I, I'm very thankful every day. I'm like, wow, I wake up. Like I get to get do what I love to do, although my clients drive me batshit crazy a lot of the time. But I get to do what I like to do, love to do, and I'm passionate about doing. And get paid for it i mean yeah. it's amazing yeah. yeah we are some two blessed bitches yeah we but are <laughs> go to the middle you know where i think you would love hmm. with the middle east where i'm from I technically it's israel but you know palestine and it's always palestine here oh, I would love but this oh my god you go there and it's like i can't even it even looks different it even looks like there's like an orange haze in the air it's it's just it's you'll love it when you go to like jerusalem and it's not as expensive as you would probably think mm -hmm. um it's actually quite affordable and uh it's a lot of fun and you'll just feel an energy so hopefully I, you'll yeah. you'll go it's on you'll tell me all about your trip um, i'm so excited yeah i think i pretty much was there anything else i wanted to ask you there was so much I wanted to ask you, um, but I think I pretty much got it for the most part. I feel like I'm missing something. I'm always missing something. That's oh, real quick. How long have you had your YouTube channel? Um, I've Well, okay, so I've had my YouTube channel and I've been posting videos just for fun for like six years. Um, but I've only like had my witchy YouTube channel for two years I think wow so like you know when you're you know like wow when I hit a thousand subscribers I like peed my pants a little bit I was like ah why are, why do a thousand people <laughs> watch my videos and then it just got bigger and my anxiety just like went like it just like so so I don't even look at the numbers you grew like this it's scary because wow. so, you did like, kind of come out of nowhere actually yeah. now that I think about it, I'm like what's your wonder she's cute oh you know and then boom <laughs> here you are it's terrifying like in a way because then you know the bigger the platform the bigger the responsibility like everything that you say is analyzed and all of a sudden you're like not a person you're like a guru yeah. of some sort and I try to like remind everybody that I'm like I'm 24. Like, I yeah. don't know what I'm doing. I'm 20. I don't know. Like, it's you do. You <laughs> do. You're fine. The, the thing is, do you like, I'm, and it's always been a worry of mine is I'm a, I, my skin is not that thick. You could probably notice that when I start going off on trolls and stuff. But do you feel like, but I do notice as a witch channel, I don't get as many. <laughs> like, I think some people are a little bit afraid you know of what we could do but do you do you get a lot of hate or is it moderate you i you know i do <laughs> um really and, yeah it's funny too because like some of them some of them is like 
it's hate and you're just like, okay, whatever. Cause you know, I'm a pole dancer also, and I'll post those things on my Instagram. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, most, the good thing is, is the majority of my community are like the kindest people that I have. Like, I'm just like, how did this community find me? They're amazing. But then there's mm -hmm. been some people like I, have this screenshot actually that I was going to post about on my Instagram kind of like talking about it but um somebody was like um maybe do some squats first and then you can try to shake it and I was like girl I know I have look at me I'm tiny like I I know my Excuse body is me. Like, yeah and so I'm just like you know I can it, it just I've done that like I've done squats like I'm a fairly active person so I was like I'm you just, have a banging body, mashallah. Don't, don't I was like, it. it's a different body type. It's fine. Yeah. And I'm gonna shake my tiny ass wherever I want. But then, and like, says the girl who God knows how many surgeries she's probably had to get uh, what know, she has. Was, not you know, that I'm uh, downing that. Right? I'm, <laughs> like, saying, I'm not downing that. I'm just saying, like, don't hate on a natural body, haters. Yeah, and it's like I've had people. Um, try to dox me apparently I didn't actually know that until somebody reached out and was telling me but I guess this person was like oh somebody find me where she lives I'm gonna send her a severed horse head and like what? I'm gonna put, and I was kind of like why I was low-key like send it those things I'll use it in my <laughs> I was like okay um but yeah like it'll get personal sometimes you know like some people will come at you for and I make mistakes and I'm okay with you know, saying like, oh yes, I was wrong in that video and I'm sorry. And like, here are my updated facts or beliefs or whatever. But like people will really come for you for things that maybe you just didn't know, or, you know, things that are really none of like nobody's business. And there are like, yeah, it, it's, it's at this point, or I, I get uh, death threats like monthly. It's, you know, I don't know. And it's just like, at this point, I'm kind of like, it's just kind of part of the job. Like, yeah. Yeah. I, I guess I like that is seems so unheard of to me. I'm like, and maybe you have to reach a certain size to get that type of craziness. Maybe. I think the most crazy thing that I ever got was one guy that said he was like a demon hunter and a witch like slayer. And he was like this, this guy who was like Bible thumping. And he basically told me that I wasn't going to, um, I wasn't going to be practicing for much longer that he was going to pretty much take care of me. And I took that very seriously. Like, I don't care if, if you may be whoever just trying to scare me or whatever, but if you threaten me, I'm gonna have to mess you up just to protect my, myself, my family, my, my dog, my cat. And Oh, and one other thing, I did get a threat. Um, it's really been mainly from from people threatening me with magic. Like, uh, apparently I had a threat and somebody made a whole screen name with my name that said, Arabian Conjure is going to pay or Arabian Conjure is messed up or something, something like that. And basically threatened me with Paolo, my zombie, in October. So I'm waiting for that. But... Um, those things I take very seriously, like, we're witches, so I feel like, okay, we don't have to have somebody come to our door to do something. Right. You know, we have other witches watching us, so if they don't like us just for the fact that they don't like us, they can, I've definitely been worked on by random people. I didn't know exactly where it was coming from, but I knew it was happening. Nothing touched me. I'm very well protected, but I could tell, like, you know how you just see signs that somebody's working on you? Yep. Did you ever feel like that's happened? Like random strangers were working on yeah. you just for well, being you? I had a, I had somebody who was a friend who started working on me. Um, and that's a whole other story for a different day. But uh, <laughs> yeah, so actually the person who was trying to dox me, a, according to them, patron Santa Morte. And I was like, to, and I was like, <laughs> Uh, good luck. You work with Santa, or I do not. No. Oh, you don't. Oh, um, I love her. She, yeah, she won't just attack for no reason, though. You know. No, no, she won't. And mm. so that's why I was kind of like, I didn't do anything, mm. you know. And uh, this person, I don't even know what they were upset about, to be completely honest. But uh, yeah, according to my sources who were involved. Uh, patron or um, reached out to Santa Morte to come after me. And on the day that I was told that the hex took place, I 
got a job offer. <laughs> um, one of my idols reached out to me and offered me a free place in his course that I'm currently in. And wow. I was kind of like, oh, I was like, do it again. Like, I was like, again. Uh, oh my God. I swear, I was just about to say that. Hex me again. Yeah. You're giving me good luck. I, I don't know. Like, yeah, it, especially being on the internet, I have um, had to like heighten the protections. A hundred percent. And somebody on my Patreon channel was actually asking for a video to talk about that kind of like how I go about that and why and what I'm protecting against and whatever. And um, what's funny is I, I don't know if you do this too. I'm actually curious. Ever since being kind of like in the public eye, I protect against all spells that are even good ones. So even if- Oh, I never thought of it. Thank you though. Now I am. Now I'm thinking. Yeah, because like, you know, people don't, like I'm only going to show what I'm going to show on the internet. I have, I have, I'm showing you maybe 10% of my life. Like there are things about me and my family and my life that nobody will ever know. And I'm okay with that. But it's more of like, if somebody is like, oh, I'm going to give her, you know, this spell that I think is good for her without knowing my situation, they might accidentally really mess something up, you know? Right. Um, right. So, or like just, you know, it's, it might just go weird. Like you don't know how the universe is going to handle that. So I, I really just protect myself against absolutely everything and only allow things that my friends or people that I accept uh, spell work from. You give permission to, exactly. you know, and that I feel is like, see that right there to me is the way I feel my spirits sometimes get me messages. Cause no, I never did protect against good things. I only protect against any curse, hex, negativity, but that is actually a good idea. You don't know if somebody's trying to be helpful and they could really hurt you because they don't know magic takes the route of least resistance. Right. So it, it could mess something up. So I definitely will be doing that from now oh, on. <laughs> that, yeah. that is like um, a very, very good idea. Um, there was something that I, I wanted to, it was like literally in my oh, head no. that I wanted to ask you, oh, you posted something that I thought was so funny and so true. Um, and it was, don't come in my inbox reading me or telling me you have messages. <laughs> that is a spiritual dick pic. Yes, I, it is. Girl, I cracked the hell up. I'm like, so true. That's so invasive, isn't yeah. it? Well, and that's another thing that I protect against. Every every um, dark moon, I'll take a bath in rosemary and mugwort. And unfortunately, lavender. I actually, I hate the smell of lavender. So I use Really? Lavender. I hate it so much. It's, eh, I don't like it. Um, I love, uh, I'm guessing you don't drink lavender tea then. I actually, see, see, that's the weird thing. <sighs> I don't mind the taste, but it's like, it's, it's the, it's the smell. I don't like oh, it. Sorry, I lost you. I knew that that was going to happen. Okay. I forgot to put my, my do not disturb on. I knew oh, that that was going to happen. I've done that. Sorry about that. Um, I love the smell of lavender. But, so do you get people doing that to you a lot? Oh like, my god! And that's and so um I mean I know I don't know if that's a Virgo thing. I'm not actually super well versed in the the zodiacs. I'm an enneagram person. I don't know if you've heard of that before. What is that? No. Ooh, I I tell every like, I tell everybody about this, especially ones that like I interview. Um, I'll send you the test. It's a personality test. Um, but Please it's do. like it's one of the it's one of the ones that I like connect with the most um, out of anything. But my type the biggest like the the biggest thing that you can do for me or to me that is going to like piss me off like that is if you make me feel like i've been invaded upon um mm. i don't like boundaries crossed i don't like people feeling like um that they are invading on me that will i the trust is gone and i'll never trust you like mm. I mean, for the rest of my life you know and um but anyway so when people message me and they're like oh you know you seemed sad so i'm gonna do this reading for you i'm like i don't know who the fuck you are and you have yeah. no idea who you don't know my situation like you know like that oh my god i don't know why that just like frustrates me so <laughs> it's none of your damn business like my whole yeah. life is none of your business and you know like i didn't want to see that 
I didn't like, what if I don't want to talk to grandma Joe? What if she was a raging bitch and she's mm. just trying to get to me through the spirit <laughs> realm because she can't ascend or whatever, you know, like, Oh, it makes me so mad that people just want to meddle and like show off that they can read. And it's a spiritual dick pic. Like, it's like, I didn't it, want to do that. That was rude and intrusive. <laughs> so true girl. And you know, I have a problem with, with, boundaries like I don't know if well how often you watch my videos but I regularly go online and bitch regularly because uh, you know sometimes I feel like um especially when you do practice for people a lot of people tend to be in desperation mode and I always I try my I'm like look you cannot get work done from this standpoint from this desperation mode you're it's going to be very hard to manifest for you you have to calm the, the, the hell down and they a lot of the time they'll they'll tell me oh yeah yeah no i'm patient i'm miss patience patience is my middle name but then as soon as you start the exchange it's like blow you up, blow you up, blow you up, message after message after message. And it's like to the point where like I literally cried tears. Like I was just so stressed out that I was, I cried because I just, it was like, give somebody their space to help you. Mm -hmm. You know, that, that, yeah, that's hard. Mm -hmm. Like in this field, that's what you'll run into the most is boundary crossing. <laughs> oh, I, I, yeah, <laughs> I'm already feeling it. Um, but I, I wonder if you can, if there's like a way, cause I don't know how, how like, you know, that exchange works. Um, but I'm wondering if there's like a way that you could kind of set that like in a contract in a way of like, okay, you're allowed to contact me, you know, like on this day after this, like a week exactly for 10 minutes and 10 minutes only. And like, if you cross, you know, if you try to keep me on the line or if you, blow up my phone or whatever like you get a refund and it's done i wonder it's if that's done. a way to do that i think that's a good idea i'm actually looking into it i was actually considering uh my plan is to stop working for people all together and just strictly do my products and this way you buy my product you have a nice day and i know it's going to work for you as long as you use it appropriately i don't have to you know but we'll get there um so so I don't want to keep you, but I do have just a couple more questions. I don't mind. I it's I don't care. I don't got anything to do today. I love your background, by the way. You Thanks. always have the cutest background. And that's another thing I think you did so well, too, with your editing. Your editing is life. I'm like, I wish I had that that gift to be able to edit stuff. I don't. I'm just, I'm, I'm born in the eighties girl. I'm it's a lot, of, it's a lot that. of time. Like I can film a video in anywhere between one and two hours. If it's a sit down video, editing can take me anywhere between six hours to like four days, depending on what it is. Like it just. And you've done that from the beginning. You've <laughs> always had great editing. You've never oh. just came on with your camera phone and, and just well, started. <laughs> I was like, uh, I deleted Did you? Yeah. <laughs> I've never noticed. You have such great um, quality content. I would maybe one of these days, but maybe maybe there's a reason Spirit didn't blow me up like that because I don't think I'd be able to handle it honestly as gracefully as you have. Oh, I, you can. I mean, if you want to call it gracefully, I will. I will take that compliment. Thank you. <laughs> you have. You have. There. People say some weird shit. Like I was in a couple of your lives. And I'm sure you probably saw some weird kind con your people are amazing, by the way. I don't I don't like to intrude on people's like another witch's live. I like I'll watch silently. So I'll just, you know, whatever. But of course you're always welcome to come into my lives. That's not what I'm saying. But you know what I mean? I'm quiet. But some comments were pretty interesting and I'm thinking in my head, I w I wonder if she saw that. Like one person's like, Are you have freckles on your nose and, and like little like things that were just like ugh, just made you kind of but yeah. it's because you're a pretty girl so i'm sure you get i mean mashallah god bless i'm sure you get those some pretty weird things um yeah well and, and i guess the good thing is is i'm more folk based obviously i'm not super in the ceremonial world and i have a friend who's um a ceremonial practitioner and boy does she get does she get the good ones 
Really? Oh my god. Like ceremonial practitioners who are like older men. They're Ugh. a special kind of breed. <laughs> like I, I can imagine. Oh do I, I wanna know some of the things that it's oh, crazy. Yeah. So you said uh, um astrology, you're not like well, not astrology, zodiac, you're not really like well versed in that and like the traits of certain signs which I find to be very accurate. Um, depending, I, I, I think Western astrology is a little more accurate, but what about like um, astrology as a whole? Like when you practice, do you pay attention to like where the planets are, the retrogrades? Do you feel like curse work can't be done during a Mercury retrograde or? I actually like the Mercury, like if the Mercury retrograde is happening, I'm like, oh, and I need to, you know, I need to do some work. I'm gonna be like, this person's getting lit. I you know, agree. like. <laughs> but I I, the only time I really pay attention to, like, the most in depth is usually, um, like, the days of the week. Kind of like, oh, this rules this day or whatever. Otherwise, not really. Um, I do have that magic of eye journal. Uh, if you haven't had, if you haven't, I like, I'll try to send you one. These things are amazing. I'm not even like. This thing, hold on. Magic Eye Journal. Look how pretty it is. Oh, wow, that is beautiful. And so, um, they, it's, it's like this Australian-based company that it's like three people who are amazing astrologers, and they basically, like, you can go to a day of the, um, let's see, a day of the week or just whatever day, and it'll tell you kind of, like, what, days are best for what and like what the moon is in and what the sun and all that jazz oh i need to get one it's different every year i'm sure right mm -hmm. yeah i wonder if there's a way i could download it i have the um i have scribed which is like that book thing you could literally look up any book you have it uh, i wonder if it's on there maybe i'll, I'll download I it i think so because it's it's a a planner um, instead of like a book book, it's like a planner. Oh, so, so it's, it's like, is it like one of those, what are they called? Like a, um, like it, it has like the days of the weeks and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. So you have to actually fill it in. Yeah. It doesn't come filled. Oh, okay. You know what I was thinking like of like a farmer, you know, those farmers almanac thing. Oh yeah. Yeah. Like that. That's what I was thinking it okay. was like. Yeah, it's, it's like kind of like that, but, um, more so. So I, I use this one for all of like my magical uh, endeavors. So, you know, like if I'm trying to plan for like a specific type of spell, I'll look through, cause you know, like if I'm doing like money work or love work or whatever, like I'll go through and sometimes it'll say that like your money work is kind of like, it's not, it's more on a challenging side that day. So I'm like, okay, not that day. And then I'll find a day usually trying to do like Thursday or something like that. Um, yeah. You know what um, I've noticed? So I always preach Thursday being a good money day. And it is Thursday, Friday. But I've also found that Tuesday is also a good money day. Really? Maybe that's just with my experience. You know, maybe it's my, my chart, it, it, something correlates. But Tuesday, yes. I think it's the power of Mars. It, like, heats up. I, I don't know. Just try try to do your money work on a Tuesday and, and tell me what you think. Because I, I really feel it's very I powerful. I you know how it works out. Yes, girl. Let me know. That. Thank you. You're welcome. And numerology. One one last question. Numerology. Um, what do you think? It's well. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, for me, it's it's again, it's more of just something that I will use lightly. So you know, like if I'm anointing something, I'll anoint it this amount of times. Or if I'm um, chanting something, or if I'm like writing something out, like a name or a, a you know, a manifestation or whatever. Um, I will use it like in folk spells, but I'm not one of those people that will look at something and be like, oh, if I use this amount of spell work ingredients on this exact day that correlates with this one word, then it adds up to this and blah, blah, you know, like I'm not, I can't, it's too much. <laughs> some point you know you kind of just got to let go and just do the damn spell you know like back in the day I look at it like back in the day they didn't have 
they looked up at the sky to see where the moon was at. Like they could, like, cause you know how you have the exact full moon, you have like right up until the full moon. And then, and then when it just starts waning, they didn't know exactly when the full moon, like it was ex the exact peak of fullness, you know, they just did it close enough, you know? Yeah. Um, sometimes I think we do think a little too deep into certain things. I agree. Um, but you have been amazing to interview. I I really thank you for coming on my channel. Of and course, thank you. Me the opportunity. It, of course, it was a pleasure. Again, I'm like a total and complete fan. Um, I would like the links to your website and your Patreon and everything, so I can put it in my description box. I also put it in the comments. You guys need to check this girl out. If you, I'm sure most of them are already subscribed to you, but if you're not, please follow her on uh, subscribe to her channel, Witch of Wonderlust. Instagram is at the Witch of. Wonderlust. There's a few copycats. You gotta be yeah. careful. I almost added one of them. Um, the Witch of Wonderlust. Yeah, I at, oh. went that post that I put, and I put at what Witch of Wonderlust without the the. And it was somebody totally different. Oh. So I'm like, oh shit, this isn't her. And and I took it out. But yeah, you have quite a few copycats. I, I didn't realize until I went to go add you. Oh. Um, and you have TikTok or no? I do have TikTok. That's mostly just shit posting though. So like if, <laughs> if okay. you're looking for information, maybe that's not the place to go, but <laughs> it's fine. So do, Facebook, no Facebook? No, I don't have a Facebook. You young, young women these days, you, they, nobody does Facebook. The young kids don't do it. I'm I just know. old as hell. I use that more than Instagram. Um, so you guys have to check her out. Check out her website. Check out her YouTube. Subscribe. And leave her a comment and let her know that you guys came for me. And thank you so much for coming on my channel and no. being so candid and answering all my questions. I really had a great time with you. I can't wait to have you on my channel. I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking for forward to it. Um, I guess, well, stop the recording and then I'll tell you. <laughs>